everybody welcome back to heart talks this week i'm here and i'm in my onesie i'm all snuggled up with my cushions sitting in my heart chair and the reason for that is because it's getting colder outside you know it's starting to change it's not as warm as it was and it's nice to be warm it's nice to be snug it's nice to feel cozy and the thing is there's so many people not only in the UK but across the world that aren't warm, that aren't snug and aren't cosy, that don't have somewhere safe and dry to sleep at night and that's what I want to talk about this week, homelessness. Anybody that saw Shadow Dreamer show or has watched Shadow Dreamer on YouTube knows that I experienced homelessness at a young age. Now I can't give you, I couldn't give advice on how to deal with homelessness. All I can do is hopefully maybe give you an idea of what it was like for me to be homeless. Now I was 16, 15 and a half, 16, very young um, had no idea where to go, what to do. I was in Glasgow, so we had three-storey blocks, and we used to say that the, the stairway that went up, we used to call it a close. So you'd go down the close and up the close. And basically, what I would do is try and find a close that was dry, um, that didn't have too many ways of getting caught, and that's where I would sleep. But the thing is, the majority of those closes had the buzzer systems on them, so you couldn't get in or out unless you were going up to one of the flats. Now, I remember one place where I used to sleep, and it had a broken back door, and I could open the back door because the window was smashed on it, and I could lie there. But it meant that that area was wet, and it meant that there was also other people knew of that place, so it wasn't safe. There's people out there that prey on young homeless people and I, as I say, I was young and I was homeless and, you know, I came up against things that were scary, you know, people did offer you money for things, people did, people did try to take advantage, people, you know, thought that because you were a child, you know, they could get away with things. So you have to toughen up, and you have to toughen up quick, and some people can do it, and some people can't. And I didn't, I'm not saying I did do it, I just tried to make it look as if I was doing it. Often people think homeless people are drunks, or drug addicts, or people that have abused themselves, or people that have done this to themselves, and that's not the fact. There are people on the streets that have addiction problems, but it still doesn't mean that they have the that they, that they should be on the street. No, not at all. And there was a place in Glasgow, and I don't know if people in Glasgow will remember this or even know of this because I only knew of it because of being homeless, but the area was called Anderson and there was a car park in Anderson, one of those multi-storey car parks, and underneath it was a place called Buckingham Palace. To me, it was like hell. It was just this collection of people and smells and rubbish and just, I felt it was as low as I could go because it was just, it, I can't even, it, it brings back the smell. That's what comes back to me, the smell. It's probably the two things, that and being wet, the two things from being homeless. This video is about homelessness, but because I was a homeless youth, I have to, I, I, I can talk about that. And I know that, that there were a lot of other young people who were, were, aren't as visible on the streets. And if you think about it, you'll always see the older people on the streets um, or the people above 18, you know. But the younger ones are the ones that hide because they're hiding from social services. They're hiding from being spotted. So they'll tend to hide a lot more. And that's where people 
who have bad intentions come in because they offer to hide you and look after you and it's not often the case not always but the majority of the time it's not the case so i i escaped and i was very lucky but people don't you know people often people don't and it becomes the rest of their lives you know and as it's getting colder and as it's getting near to, nearer to christmas yeah okay i said the christmas word you know it, people have different ways of spending christmas and you know some people are with the family and other people are on their own but whatever you do just think that there is somebody that's going to be cold wet alone on christmas day and I, what I'm thinking is another one of my crackpot schemes, but I'm thinking if it's now October, if we all, why don't we get a bag and just maybe put a jumper, a, a, an old jumper that we don't want, any old coats go into it, some food, you know, all that kind of thing, just stuff that some homeless person w would be so grateful for the majority of people on the street don't choose to be there they're there because something has happened and it's become too difficult or it's become out of their control and that's why they're there I think for me homelessness was just scary just so scary because I was constantly on guard I was never able to let the guard down and you know I've talked about Glasgow and I loved Glasgow but god that place at night was cold and wet and once you get wet you stay wet you know you don't dry off because there's no heat so you don't dry off so I used to remember you know I was still going to school I would go to school sometimes after having slept on the street and I would go to the, the toilets um, and, and dry off in the morning you know whatever you do have a think about that and next time you walk past somebody in the street I'm not saying you have to give them money I I know people have different ideas on you should you shouldn't they're gonna drink it they're gonna do this with it I'm not saying that but I'm just saying take take a minute to think you know and even if it means going and getting them a cup of tea or coffee from McDonald's it costs a dollar it costs a pound you know even if you caught if you know you want to give them a, your scarf or just something you know and I hear people saying oh it's disrespectful to give people on the street you know buy them food or give them is it hell if somebody gave me food gave me water gave me a warm blanket when I was cold and on the street then I would have been nothing but appreciative appreciative so after that San Francisco is only a couple of days away I've been sick I've been rough I've had a blood clot I've just not been well but I think I'm still going um, I hope to still go so the next video you see will be me on the way hopefully so I'm really looking forward to that haven't heard anything from San Francisco about youtubers or anything like that so please in the comment section below please comment also, if you've been homeless or if you have any ideas, good ideas for helping the homeless this Christmas or at any time, put it in the comment section below because it's really useful for me to see, for other people to see, to get ideas. Great way. Then, if this video would be good for somebody, then share it. You know what to do. Hit that share button. And while you're hitting the share button, hit the like, comment, and subscribe button as well um, because the more subscribers the more likes the more shares the better this video will do and the more people it can get out to now I'm doing a show shout out this week and I haven't done one for a while so I want to do a show shout out for Alan Graham Sloan now I've known Alan Sloan for about 15 years and I hadn't seen Alan for the last couple of years and then I learned that he was very unwell now Alan has end-stage COPD emphysema and the doctors, you know, give that illness 
three to five years and Alan's already two years in. He has a lot of trouble breathing. Um, he's, there's holes in his lungs and he really struggles to breathe. And it's, it's horrible to see somebody not being able to breathe properly. So to not act, to be the person that can't breathe, it's just beyond, beyond belief, you know, how scary that must be. But Alan Graham Sloan is not the kind of man that you tell to go and sit in the corner and wait to die. He's fighting this and he's set up a GoFundMe page and he's fighting to get life-saving stem cell treatment. And it doesn't, there's no signs of it curing it yet, but there are signs of it definitely being a help to, you know, help ease it and help repair the damage. Um, and if the re damage is repaired, then that, that would make his life so much easier. Now, Heart Talks is not about me plugging for money or doing anything like that, and that's not what this is about either. What it's about is introducing you to people, introducing you to their lives, to their struggles, their fights, their ambitions, their goals, their dreams, and their accomplishments. And that is what this is about. I want to introduce you to Alan and his story. And then if you decide to donate anything, then that's great. But if not, just being educated about different people and their lives. For me, when I did Shadow Dreamer was such an amazing thing. And that's what I hope I can do with Heart Talks. So see you very soon, like not even two weeks. It's gonna be very soon. Um, from the airport is my plan. And yeah, I'll be going off to San Francisco. That was my impression of an aeroplane. Obviously it wasn't very good. So, yeah, I'll see you soon. Okay, take care.